Hey, Railbirds, here we are with a, uh, another match for you from the 2023 Western BCA 8 Ball Championship. This is a bronze one singles match. Nathaniel Henry versus Jeffrey Trafree. I'm sure I am butchering uh, Jeffrey's last name. Sorry about that. All right, that is Nathaniel at the table. He won the flip. This is going to be a race to four. I'm your host, Kevin Ross. Thank you guys for tuning in. We are coming at you live from the Chinook Winds Casino Resort here in beautiful Lincoln City, Oregon. It is beautiful here. If you're ever in the area, come on down. All right, Nathaniel has made a ball on the break. CSI Rules 8 Ball states that the table is always open after the break. You do not have to take what you make. Groups are not established until you legally pocket a ball that you actually call. Only then are groups established. Also, the 8 on the break is neither a win nor a loss. If you make the eight on the break, well, you just spot the eight, and you have the option of continue to shoot or break again. If you make the eight on the break and scratch, then it's your opponent who has those options. While we're talking about the eight ball, if you're uh, at the end of your rack and uh, you're shooting at the eight, if you scratch, as long as the eight's still on the table, that's not a loss of game. If you make the 8 and scratch, well, then that would be an automatic loss. Being joined by Mrs. Railbirds, Sherry Ross. How you doing, Sherry? Doing all right. How are you? Just another day in paradise. Getting paid to watch pool. Doing this thing. Does it get any better than that? Getting paid to play pool. That is uh, probably better. Yeah, I mean, okay. like guaranteed money to play pool. <laughs> not, not, no, you have to win. Nope. Oh, and just like that, uh, I think we're going to uh, step out for a minute and let Summerfield take over. So, Evan and Sherry will be stepping out. Summerfield will be stepping in. So, enjoy the match, guys. Will do. Right. This is Jeffrey at the table right now, firing in a solid ball. Got his work cut out for him in his rack, but he's got a couple options here. He can use the three to push those balls, which I kind of like because the left, sorry, that right side pocket feels a little less obstructed. He wanted to go the other way. Okay, makes a little bit of contact. Unfortunately, that 2 1 still tied up. I think the 1 passes the 14. So he may go at that right now. Not sure if he called safe or. Oh, he said the 1. 
Wow, thin on the two. He called the two. It was a nice little shot. Had just enough of the pocket to sneak that by. All right, coming back for the five. Drills it, but over rolls a little bit unless he was trying to come short side on the three. Gets himself good and straight, though. Three ball straight up the rail. It's probably going to leave him for, oh, barely misses that ball. Nice try. And that leaves kind of a tough little spot here. I'm not sure if that 12 ball back cuts for him. And the 14 looks hampered. Let's see what Nat thinks he's going to do about it. Looks like he can see... He's calling it. He can see enough of it to make it. Definitely tough to tell from up here. Oh yeah, definitely could even overcut that ball. Well, nice effort there. He's got that side of the table pretty locked down. A little room there on the 12. He might try to sneak that one past. Because uh, otherwise he's going to have to get underneath it and... It's not really an obvious shot to do so. You kind of try to play the three ball, come around three rails, but... All right, so just playing the six to get back across the table. Got underneath the three. Uh, I think he wanted to be on the other side of that, but this he has a chance to follow this. Just uh, load this thing up with inside, and you can cruise on down. Otherwise, you kind of got to watch out for that side pocket. Barely getting past there, but does so. Doesn't pocket the ball, though. And this looks like trouble to me. I think Nathaniel's probably going to go 14-12. Um, that's the way I like to go. I just would rather be... There's more margin for error on the other side of things. He likes the other way. So 12 to the 14, I just feel like... Got a, a little smaller gap there. Don't get behind that eight ball. Yeah, I guess that's why I, I like getting out of that gap a lot more than I like trying to find a gap to get back to that ball. So unfortunately, getting himself hooked there. This is Summerfield with Railbirds TV. Coming to you live from the 2023 Western BCA Championship. This is Nathaniel Henry at the table right now. Looking at kicking this ball. Trying to take down the first win. Wow, I think he made that ball. Nice shot, man. Beautiful one rail kick there. Has shape. Question here is whether you want to take it inside or the corner. Um... I think the side is a little bit easier shot. I think the corner, you risk a little, well, I don't know, the scratch is kind of there if you're going up in the corner. I, I like to shoot this in the side. I like to try and kind of like lay the cue ball down on the rail just in case I miss. He did just that. I Every time I do that, though, I wish I would have put all my effort into making the ball as opposed to, to worrying about what happens if I miss. Pretty straight little roll here, if you can make that three ball. Kind of coming up a little bit short. Uh, eight ball high side of that side pocket. And this is a trickier cut than it looks like. That's a, I mean, that corner pocket is just wide open. The jaws are trying to suck that cue ball right in there. So, got to do something to avoid that. You got to either overcut this eight with a bunch of high ball to get to that side rail. Or, I mean, you had Jack up and punch it. He might be far enough out. Let's see. Yeah, boy, that's a that's a scary shot. Ooh, and barely gets that side rail. Nathaniel Henry taking down game number one. This is a race to four in the bronze division singles. These guys are probably pretty deep. This is probably fifth, fifth or sixth round. I don't see a check at the bottom of there, so this is probably an A-side match also. Unfortunately, I don't have the bracket pulled up. Why don't I look at that? Why did I not, not say I don't have it done and do it? Let's see here.
Over on bonus coverage right now, we got another bronze singles match going. All kinds of bronze action. Let's check it out. This is bronze one, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Everything up, dry break. Those are my least favorite. Well, hello. This is a side match here. And other table is a side match also. This is playing for the hot seat. I'm lying. This is playing to play for the hot seat. Pretty close though. So these guys are getting there. These are the the cream of the crop in their division. 403 versus a 406 here and a 401 versus 416. So I would imagine the caps Probably between 375 and 425, something like that. Seems like about within 50 points uh, for the most part. All right, Nathaniel Henry figuring out what to do with this table. He's got his work cut out for him. Ooh, that ball almost slid in. I would have been surprised if it did as high up on the rail as it hit, but almost made that ball. All right. Jeffrey Treffrey coming back to the table. I'm just going to go with Jeffrey Treffrey because that, that works for me. It's probably something cool like Treffry, but I like Jeffrey Treffrey. My name's Summerfield, so I get to joke around about names. I think. I hope so. Uh, yeah, and Jeff with looking at playing safe. Looks like he's probably either going to use the 10 ball to make the 7 or carry him up there. Just undercuts it a little bit. But missing that 7 ball. And a lot of, a lot of promise here for solids. 2 ball, you got to do something about it. It does go in the side, but just barely. Um, seven's not a great starting ball, except that the four ball goes in that lower left-hand corner pocket. So if you could use the seven to get on the four right now, you'd be looking pretty good. All right, shooting that one ball. We're getting to a great spot. Not a whole lot you can do right here except play the three. You can try. He really wants to play that seven. You could try carry him off the two into the 11-4. I'm not sure if that 11-4 passes. That's a pretty super combo. Looks like that's what he's shooting. Wow, look at that. Nice shot, man. If I knew where the highlight button was, I'd be hitting it right now. I'm hitting my imaginary highlight button. Would you? I'm not thinking he's going to make that ball, but yep, so making that one, great shot. Gets underneath the four, still leaves the 11 open. Thank you. A 
left it a little more open than I thought. Looks like he has a 12 also. 12 in the side. Don't want to wait on this 13. I like playing the 15 to the 13 here. Looks like he's drawn out. Uh, the 11 ball is a great ball to get on the 13, though, also. So maybe that's his thinking. 14, 9, 11, 13. Um, definitely no problems with that. I think that's a really good pattern for this this particular situation. Oh. Just don't want to get yourself straight on this nine. Want to give yourself a good angle. Give himself a great angle. Just missed that ball, unfortunately. Nathaniel or Nat coming back to the table right here. Looks like the two does pass the four. kind of like playing two to the four, four to the three. I don't like getting back to the four from the three. Again, there's just enough block in there that I'd rather not have to hit a window if I don't have to. All right. I think that same pattern is going to hold true. I think it's going to be 14, 9. Well... 11 ball doesn't really have a pocket anymore. Could probably try to carry him off the floor underneath the two, but that doesn't look great. So maybe it's going to be 14, 9, 13, 2. Oh, went short side on the nine ball. Uh, leaves himself a pretty steep angle, but definitely an angle to get back down table. Back cut on this nine ball. Drills it. Makes contact with the eight. Gets on the 13 ball. Holy cow. Uh, the, you got to play a pretty controlled shot here to avoid hitting the 4 ball, getting stuck up in there, and come back in to leave yourself a shot on the 11. All right, or just run right into that 8. That worked out well. Probably going to play an over and back, trying to stay below this 8 ball. Drills it. Well, he got the over part, just not the end back. Kind of want to cut this ball all the way down the rail in the side. That's a really tough shot. Some people are great at side pockets. I really like side pockets, but this is too thin for me. That pocket just collapses the closer and closer you get to the rail. Yep, he's going to cut it all the way down the corner. This is Jeffrey Treffrey trying to make it 1-1. in the hole. Oh, man. Great try there. That was an excellent effort. Ball just barely didn't fall. Hangs in the pocket. That brings Mr. Nat back to the table. Looks like 2-4-3. To me, just want to make sure you don't bump that 4. Bumps it a little bit, but gets away with it. Gets himself put on the rail. And this is... You just don't want this ball to leak up table and leave you too sharp on the three, making it tough to pocket. That'll do. Very makeable cut here. Drills it. All right, eight ball to take a two nothing lead. Race to four. That's big action right there. Halfway there, and that will bring Jeffrey back to break. Nope, I lied. Did I lie? Nat to break. Here we go. 
Looks like hard rack breaking. Hard rack racking. And the winner of this and the bonus stream will be playing one another for the point match. And that will be coming up. I guess I could probably even tell you. Let's see. Nope, they won't. The winner of these two matches will be playing to play for the point. Uh, not till tomorrow, though. Everything's running a little bit behind today. Uh, this is 8-ball. They're only accounting for an hour and a half for these races, which makes sense. Uh, typically, the formula for 8-ball is about 10 minutes a game. Averaging races to 5, that means a maximum of 9 games should be 90 minutes, but... The fact is, you just you get some slower players out there that put some tables behind, and those things can really snowball on you. Not to break. Looking like a headball break. A little further off the center line. Let's see what kind of success he's having. All right, three, six, nine, twelve, four. Are they? Uh, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. They're all up there. I, I'm gonna start keeping score. For those of you just tuning in, I'm a fan of the second ball break. Um, I, I would love to head ball break all day, but I just feel like it leaves too much to chance. Uh, every time I dry break, I feel like I give my my opponent a great break that I'm hoping for, so I'm I'm doing everything I can to make sure I stay at the table even if I get tough clusters. And I think he's right, solids are the are the obvious suit here. Uh biggest reason being Alright. Yeah, uh, the ball's blocking the pockets. The four and the five ball. There was the two ball. Got to figure out something to do with that 11-4, because it doesn't have a clear pocket yet. Might be able to make the 2-11-4 combo. Definitely back cut on this one ball here. It's going to... Got to miss that pocket. Cut that a little bit thin and ended up scratching. A little thicker he would have got to the side rail. But that's kind of no man's land out there. All right, stripes coming to the table. Plenty of balls to work with. They really got to figure out that foot end of the table as quick as they can. If he's looking at playing off the four ball here in that pocket, I really like that. Uh, if you can open that pocket up, you can pretty much get out from there. Nice shot, man. That was a great idea. All right. I'm probably going to go for the nine here. Let's check it out from this side. Even though you got a little back cut on the 9, you still got plenty of room to work. He likes the 11. He's a little straighter on the 11. Very nice shot. Gets himself straighter on the 9. I like 9 to the 12 from here. Looks like he does, too. You don't want to run out of things to do with this 15 ball, and you don't really want to be shooting the combo because you just don't have anything, any other available pockets on that side of the table. Uh, I like the idea of 14, 13, 12, 15, because that opens up that side pocket for the 15. And 
and that's I mean pretty pretty natural rotation there. Really just want to roll this ball in. You don't want to push it. Looks like he wants to stop it instead. Got away from just a little bit. And again now now you're looking at a tougher shot. You do have a little backboard with the two ball there. Probably gonna cut that thirteen over there in the side pocket. But yeah, at this point you're you're losing your cue ball a little more. Definitely opening things up. Cuts that one thin. Overcuts it. All right, that's going to bring Jeffrey back to the table. Jeff has options here. I kind of like starting with the 3-2, or sorry, the 3-5 and getting on the 4. I'd like to get the 4 out of the way just because you got the 12 there, and it's it can prove to give you problems later in the rack. I'm probably playing three, four, five, two, one here. Sorry, I meant three to the five. You like not doing the combo, just going straight to it. I like that also. So now four, three, two, one. Hey. <laughs> Opposite nine ball. Okay. I think probably changing a little bit because of that. Keeping himself on the rail. Uh, this is one that I do not want to baby. I would rather come all the way out so I know that I have the gap between the 13 8. I don't want to take any chance getting stuck behind the 15. Or the 8 ball. Looks like he got away with it. And. That ball pretty full, but great speed. Coming back out, taking the eight ball in the side pocket. Jeffrey Treffer trying to take down this third game to make it 2 1. Jeff Treff, 2 1. We got action. Jeffrey to break. This is Summerfield with Railbirds Production coming to you live from the 2023 Western BCA Championship here at the Chinook Winds Casino and Resort. Over here in fabulous Lincoln City, Oregon, huge thanks to Chinook Winds and everything they do for this tournament for pool. You got a BCA this week, APA coming up next week. Fabulous sponsors of this event. Thank you so much. Speaking of sponsors, big shout out to Ox Billiards up in Seattle. If you haven't been to Ox, you haven't seen the the modern era of pool hall in the Northwest. Ox is about as cool as they get. Uh, snooker tables, Chinese eight ball table, um, yeah, and beautiful Rasan tables. They take excellent care of their equipment. Super attentive staff, really awesome. They do streaming out of there. Owners are friendly. The players are quality. Um, it's just a fantastic place. Go check out Ox. Big shout out to our fun day sponsors as well. You see him up here, give him some love. Uh, big shout out to the owner, uh, Dan Wolf of the Trough Billiards out of Portland. Trough is a great bar. Check it out. Go have a beer, shoot some stick. It's awesome. Back at it. Um, I think he stiff racked himself. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, they're all there. That looks like a one pocket game. I can't tell if that 3-5 is wired. If it is, I kind of like solids here. Or, yeah, 3-5. Now let's go to the rail. Yeah. Not sure. I don't like taking the breakout off this 9. And I, I don't see a clear break ball for solids. Looks like that 7 does go on the side. Looks like he wants to come back through it with a 9. Nope, just rolling up. This is when it's really important to just not get caught up making balls, but really come up with a plan. If you can roll down, but still leave yourself a steep angle on the 13, that can be a viable break ball. You could also use the 13 to get on the 14. Bobbles it in there. 
this is a pretty good break ball. It's a lot of distance to travel, and you don't want to over-muscle it, but... I mean, you're not... Unless you're going to pull up to shoot the 14 next. The 14 is a terrific break ball if you're on the right side of it. But yeah, that's... you got to move a lot of action in there to make something happen. Playing the 13. Let's see if he tries to go into the pack. Definitely tries to look out 8 ball. Oh my gosh, I was thinking the whole time too, but does a great job peeling his balls apart. Um, Alright. Still not out of the woods. Kind of got to draw into this. Yeah, unfortunately breaks the ball that was broken out back in. The one and only Ernie Amore coming by. Definitely check out him. One of the great custom cue makers out of the Northwest. Looks like we're going to go to 2 nothing over there on the other table. Rich Nelson taking a little lead. All right, and that brings Jeffrey back to the table. Solids are looking funky right now. Six does not pass. Two ball goes, seven ball goes. I mean, not much doing there for the one five three. You can use the two to break out the six right now. Yeah, definitely not a fan of just making balls at this point with this rack. I don't. Yeah, I don't see anything for the three five one. Once the seven balls out of the way, I believe the five would go up table. Well. Not a problem right now anyway. Not able to pocket that ball. Gives himself a back cut on the 14 and a chance to break this 10 ball out. He's looking at the bank though. Or maybe at the cut. He's looking at the cut. This is going to be tight. He's probably got a lot more room than I think, but... It looks tight for my position here. Good hit. Unfortunately, shot doesn't go. One definitely move before the other, though. Yeah, you can just kind of roll forward for the for the four, or you can take the four in that opposite corner, upper left-hand corner pocket. Um, and maybe you can leave yourself low, kind of come to that upper side of the screen like that, and if you leave yourself in back, oh, it doesn't fall. Getting ahead of myself. Boy, that ball is deep. Can't believe that hung up. Oh, it's no walk in the park, but he definitely has a shot on this. So, really got to buckle down and make this 14 ball and not let it roll past the 12 line. If you can stay past the center line, or stay ahead of the center line on the 12, so you're able to drift down for the 10 in the opposite side pocket, should be looking good. I would just be rolling this ball in, just like that. Oh, catching the edge of the pocket. Not going. I think he barely had the line on that 12. He would have cheat the pocket, but he got there. All right, moment of truth here for Jeffrey. Just hold up. Darn it. Hey, he's got to figure out something to do with these balls. <laughs> it was the first time she didn't duck.
All right, making that ball. Sometimes that's just what happens is you, you try to work yourself through the rack by making balls. Plays the combo. Combo is on. What a shot. Unfortunate roll there for Jeffrey Treffery. Ooh, tries the bank, catches the 10 ball. I'm not sure he had a line on that bank. That was tricky. <sighs> well, tough action here. Kind of like just rolling this forward and then taking the combo. Am I feeling lazy? Is that what's going on? can also play up and back, play the 10 on the side. That looks like what he's thinking about. That's probably a way better shot. Left himself a little bit steep. He does still have the 14 also, so if he wants to, he can go thin off the 14 side rail, foot rail, side rail, and take the 10 again. Which is probably smart. I think the, the better key ball of the two is the 10 ball. Just drawn out of it, not one to wrap around at all. These are tough. They're tough to judge. I mean, you can get stuck down there pretty easily. Just make sure you don't hit this too hard. End up behind the eight five. Hits it great. Gets the gap. This is one where I'd even just go rail first. Rail first with some inside. Side rail fourteen foot rail. Back out for the eight in the same corner pocket. He's going to draw out of it. Got to make sure you don't make contact with that eight. Caught it on the right side of the ball, so unfortunately draws to that side of the table. And this is tough action. This is a big potential scratch shot here. Uh, he's calling the bank. I think he's pretty aware that that back cut is, yeah, dangerous, scary. Gonna call for a ref here. I'm not certain why, but I do advise everyone if you if there's any sort of discrepancy, call the ref ahead of time. It's a lot easier to talk about it before the shot than after. He might not have been. Oh no. Well, clean hit, but unfortunately, it was a foul. All right. Sometimes the ref will do that to us. Pat's a really good one, though. We've got some really great referees here. Big shout-out to our referee staff. That's about the most thankless job in the world, so next time you're thinking about griping about a call, remember these guys are, are working for just about nothing. They do have a lot of skill, and they definitely don't have any interest in doing something to intentionally <laughs> screw you over you know these guys are they're doing doing the best they can and i really think they do a pretty terrific job we're lucky to have them jeffrey treffrey looks like he's going just falling down short side all right it's a good this is to tie it up, 2-2, two, two, race to four. Nice shot, 2-2. Two, two. Nathaniel to break. He's got Nat on his shirt. I should probably just embrace the contraction and start calling him Nat. Oh, no, no. Well, my 10.30 match got moved to 9 a.m., but I just saw my one of my potential opponents, and I might be able to play tonight, so maybe you guys won't have to listen to me all night long. I might get to go play pool at 10.30.
And if you know anything about me, I like playing pool at 1030. Got an eight ball on this table right behind there. Jam bank there. Let's see if she can pull it off. Hey, hey. Hello. She drilled it. Wow, she drilled that ball. What a shot. Nice one. I'll have to tell her I got that on camera for her. All right, here we go. Second ball break. He hit that one really clean. I love that break. I get it. I know why people don't like the break. I, I get that it's not as open, feels congested, but I don't care who you are. You want to be at the table the shot after the break. Yep, uh, 14 ball might cut here. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't tell if the 14 passes the 10. If it does, he's got action. Did go, didn't get there. He was trying to come around for the 10 ball. And got there. That was the right idea. Unfortunately, just not pocketing the ball. That's... I mean, one of the distinct things that you'll see between bronze and and gold or silver and platinum is just good decision making and a, a struggle with execution. Not not always good decision making, but the majority of players out there at this level do think about what they want to do. Um, just either not executing as consistently or or struggling to, to know how to execute. Um, but yeah, this both these guys obviously excellent shot makers, natural shot makers. Um, it, it just takes time to really develop that. Oh, those different strokes necessary, barely hanging on on the edge there. He's point hooked. Um, I think he's still got the six ball, though. Great little bailout situation here. Oh, overcuts it. Darn it. All right. Well, lucky that ball didn't fall on the side anyway. Doesn't give up ball in hand. That brings Nat back to the table. That's got a lot going on on that left side of the table. Three blocking the 12. Yeah, I want to get the... I'm going to get some stuff out of the way there. I like starting with the 11 here. Starting with the 15. I like the 15 to get on the 12 once I clear that side. He might just be lining up for the bank, too. Hello. Yeah, sometimes when you don't know what to do with it, it's easier to just leave yourself a shot that you think is pretty viable. And that 12 ball bank is pretty dead on. You might not get a better shot at it than this. It's like you can see the 10. It's easy to take the easier shot because you're afraid of the harder shot, but if it doesn't get you anywhere, it's it's just not usually worth it. Now he's jacked up over a ball, cutting cutting a ball 60 degrees, you know, coming up and down the table. Excellent shot, though. Beautiful, beautiful play on the ball. Um, I don't think the 12 cuts into the side. I guess that's what I'm saying is 12 till doesn't cut. Uh, the bank is far more difficult than it was previously. You had a long shot on the 11, but you either got to get back on the other side of the 13 to play the 13 in the same pocket, or to come back to bank the 12 ball, which you could have done the first time. 12 could still go on the side, but that is a thin cut. 
All right, I think that's what he's looking at. Barely catching the front of that pocket. All right, only real problem here for Jeffrey is the 1-5. I don't think he has a line to see the 5 now. If he can see through to make the 5, this is pretty smooth sailing. You just got to make sure you get out of there. Don't get stuck behind the 8. All right, gets through the pack. Unfortunately, missing that ball. Tough one for Nat here. Nat might have to try another one on the side. If you're not going to bank the 11, I think the cut on the 12 is the most natural shot. But unfortunately, I mean, you're you're in bank zone now. Five balls block in the corner. Three balls block in almost the entire upper left-hand corner. Yeah, I think it might be cutting the 12 ball. It looks like he's calling the bank. Just a little long. Hangs the ball in the pocket, though. Sometimes that works out for you. Can see the edge of the 5 to make it. Can see the 3, 4. 1, 5 is no longer as much of a problem. 6 ball is blocked by the 11. Just because of the position he landed in, I I kind of like going going for the six now, just trying to make contact with it. Seven to the six. Not sure that's what he'll end up doing, but it's a pretty natural line there. Came a little bit wide. All right, on to the three. At this point, he's probably going to try to leave the gap between the 12-1 to shoot the five next. Okay, he's trying the bank. Very makeable bank here. Off the 12 ball, almost makes the ball. I was wondering if that's what we were going to see. I kind of like being able to play the five and use that to get over on the other side to cut, cut up table, but that's not the direction we went. Stripes. This is tough action again for Nat. I can't tell if that 12, I'm pretty sure the 12 cuts on the side. It's not fun to cut from where he's at right now, but I might play the 11 to get closer on the 12. So you really also want to make sure you can move that 13 ball, if at all possible. Whoa, the one and the only Joel Peck. Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get out of there. Holds up. He did not get point hooked on that. I don't think he did. That 13 might pass the 6-3. If it does, and you can get enough spin on this, you just got to make sure you hit a bunch of English and not, not a bunch of anything else. If you hit enough top spin, you can kind of jam it. Ooh. It's back on top of it. No pocket for the 13. Probably just going to try to push through here, but that's a tough one. He's calling safe. He's going to roll the 13 up on the 5. Maybe try to make the 13. All right, clear shot here, though, for Jeff. Thirteen's blocking at least part of the pocket for the one. Yep, I like trying to get straight on the one. If I don't get there, take the three. But 
Depending on how much of a pocket you have for that one ball, I want to get that sucker out of the way. Although 3 1 6 is a good pattern, as you got to move the 3 before you shoot the 6. Yeah, you should be able to get somewhere around where he is now. Probably going to have to lay over and back here. It's really nice line. Beautiful shape. Look at it going rail first, rail first, drills that ball. Nice shot. Yes. All right, trying to play safe. Wow, good control. I don't think he can see the six ball. I mean, he can see the six ball. I just don't know if he can pocket the six past the three. Big thank you to all my lovely assistants helping me out keeping score on two tables. Gosh darn it. I, for, I didn't see what Jeff did there. Sorry. Let's catch up the other table. Well, that gives Mr. Nat ball in hand here. Pocket this eight ball, make it three to two. We got action here in Lincoln City, Oregon at the 2023 Western BCA Championship. This is Summerfield Habner coming to you live with Railbirds TV. What's up? If you guys are enjoying what you're what you're seeing, what you're hearing, please hit that like button, subscribe button. It's going to let you know every time we go live, and it helps us out in the process. So hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Hopefully you haven't had to mute me so far. Day ain't over yet though, right? Big shout out to our sponsors here. The Chinook Winds Casino and Resort. That's where we are. It's awesome. These guys have been doing this for, shoot, I've been doing this for more than 10 years. I I love it. And they do a whole lot to support pool in the Northwest. So thanks for being here. Shout out to Ox Billiards. There's the break. All right. Something fell. I heard it. Three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen. Two balls down. Looks like two solids. Dead in on the two ball. Sorry, on the one ball. Wasting no time. Open that ball up. Does the three pass? I don't think it does. Ooh, undercutting that ball. Catching the point. That's also something you see uh, from from level to level is the the speed that people play. I know that when I when I play slow and I like do my pre shot routine between every shot, I feel ridiculous. I feel like I'm taking forever. I feel like everybody's watching me. I feel like kind of like an idiot. Um, when I watch myself play like that, I realize I don't take long at all, and it's it's worth it got to remember, when you're at the table, nobody else is. And if you're not willing to take that space, nobody's going to take it for you. So finding your rhythm is a really important part of this game. And it doesn't always have to be the same as everybody else, you know. Some people are comfortable shooting quick, but it's a lot easier, especially in a game like Bar Box 8 Ball, to get yourself in trouble shooting quick. Yeah, John kind of bringing up um, the better... Better players in the lower divisions typically have low robustness, and the and again, he's not saying there's any sandbagging going on, but I think you're right about that. That there there are players that are just up and coming. Uh, one of my favorite lines that I say all the time about Fargo is Fargo doesn't tell you what will happen; it tells you what's already happened. 
Wow, nice little shot there. Opening up the 15 ball, make, pocketing that ball. Beautiful shot. I think he's going to try off the 7. That 7 ball looks pretty deep, and it's also pretty centered in the pocket. This is not as easy as it looks. The worry here is that you hit so full that the 7 comes back and knocks the 10 back out. Exploring his other options. Yeah, if you get a chance to share this uh, with people too, please give it a share. Send it out to other people. I'm going to share it right now on the intertubes so the world knows that we're live here. All right, 13 in the side. Oh, man, barely missing that ball. And this is coming down to the wire. Nat just needs one. Jeffrey needs two games. Can't let Nat win another one. I think Nat a little frustrated with how that last rack ended up playing out, but had a second to sit down. Looks like he's collected himself a little bit. Ready to tackle this rack. No real problems here. Uh, just got to make sure you you pocket balls. Eight ball is the only thing a little tricky. You only got part of a pocket, it looks like. Gosh darn it. It's so, it's so easy to let that snowball to your frustration. And you're on the TV table. You're in this room with 74 tables, hundreds of people, and there's what, six, five screens around with your name on it and everybody's watching, or you feel like everybody's watching. The fact is, nobody's really watching. I, I remember I played a pretty big match on here a year ago and I I felt like everybody's watching at the end. They, like, announce it and there's, like, four people that applaud. So it is it is a lot of pressure and it's it's awesome. I mean, this that's why we're here is to play these matches and to get to the TV table, but... Try to not let it overwhelm you, too, because in the end, it definitely means more to you than it does to anybody else. And that's not to diminish any anyone's accomplishment or anything like that. It's just, wow, gets all the way down there. Is he going to make contact with it? That would be nice. Give him a nudge. Oof, just the wrong side of that. That is a tricky spot to be in, too. Got that ball there. Can't even really kick into it. It's going to have to come with something. All right, so we're going to try and kick and all the way back around that 15. That is really tough to shoot. Try and get you a better angle. Didn't grip quite enough for him. All right, well, giving up ball in hand there to Nat. Nat at the table with an opportunity to close the set out. Giving himself a pretty steep angle here for ball in hand. I might uh, have myself a little more straight. He really wanted to get all the way down there, though. Bobbles that pocket in. Ooh, this is not an easy combo. Drills it. Good shooting. Gets a little bit funkity. Eleven, ten, thirteen, eight from here. Thirteen's not my favorite key ball, but so he did did force it. That's kind of why as you end up pretty long, and now you're real straight on the ball, and it's hard to get to the other side for the ten. So, but you still have some good safety options, definitely. Make this 13 ball, get on the chin, and then figure out whether or not you feel like playing safe. As long as you're anywhere near the... Ooh, missing that ball, leaving an opportunity here. Big opportunity here for Jeffrey. So Jeffrey Treffrey with a chance to make it hill-hill here. This is a rail-first shot with some spin.
Uh, request from the... Wow, how did that ball not fall? Man, I thought he hit it perfect. There's been this hilarious giant leprechaun walking around all week that's been wearing, like, neon and crazy hats. He just came up and told me he wanted me to be <laughs> Paige's friend because his phone's off. Uh, the things that you, ha you hear up here in the stream booth are pretty funny. We usually have some big monitors and we're a little less exposed than we are right now, but we're just... I handle all kinds of questions. I haven't... I've been asked to cash a slip before. I guess I look like the dude that's, that's cashing slips. People ask me a lot who I'm talking to. Turns out probably not many people. Tries to cheat that pocket, does so successfully. Catching that right edge, leaving the 10 ball. He knows this is the end, the pressure's on. Two shots away. 10 ball on the side. Don't have to do much with this cue ball, just going to roll forward. Well, look at that, though. Pressure's on again. Jeffrey with a chance, another chance to make this three ball. But boy, it is in the hole, and he does not want to be shooting that eight ball from that far away. I mean, you can jump up and and jump this ball. The Massé, unfortunately, just leads into the pocket. It's really easy to Massé this ball, make the three, and then scratch at the same time. Ugh. So heartbreaking. You hit a good shot, and that's that's a hard one. Well, I'm sorry, Jeffrey. That is really too bad. I think that's one where I probably would have tried a shallow jump. Because, um, yeah, it's it's just really hard to avoid that. If you, if you hit thin side on the ball, that's good, but you didn't have a big mass A. Huge opportunity here for Nat. This is to close it out. Three to two. And this will be to take him to the match to play to play for the point which is exciting stuff man taking his time i like to see that nat staring down the barrel of it here we go this is to make it 4-2 nat takes down the win congratulations to him excellent match there to jeffrey as well thanks so much for tuning in out there everybody this has been summerfield with railbirds tv coming to you live from the western bca championship here in lincoln city oregon if you get a chance hit that like button hit the subscribe button let us know you're watching tune in we got tons more pool action coming at you real soon i think we're going to be here all night long so thanks so much catch you soon